What's up everybody? This is going to be a slightly long and detailed video of the new um, VIC bobbin configuration. So uh, a gentleman by the name of Ronnie um, originally thought this simple idea up of using a, uh, a housing and a bobbin that you could adjust the gap and get the correct uh, inductance values that we're trying to achieve. So. Um, Originally, I wasn't for sure about the gap in the original VIC, but uh, I still, you know, am up in the air. I'm assuming that uh, there can or cannot be a gap. From my understanding, if we hit all the numbers right, it should just work. Huh. So, yeah. So this is it. And I'm uh, not going to go into too much detail, but I'm going to show you how to construct this whole thing. Uh, the bobbins go in here like this. Okay. All 3D printed. The top goes on like this. I have to get it started. Okay. And these thumb screws are actually what makes the adjustments. So, you can't really see it, can you? So as I tighten this, the gap gets smaller. And because I use clear plastic, you can actually see in there and see what's going on. So, this is uh, designed to hold this very tight. Um, and as I screw this in here, it will get to the very, very bottom. And the cores will be actually touching. So there's no play in this thing. And so when you want to adjust the core gap, you just grab one of these and ever so slightly adjust it a little at a time. Now it's a little loose because the cores are loose. Now in the video, I do not go over this, but uh, there are holes right here. And the reason I put holes right there that are threaded is so that you can make another thumb screw like this, which I show you how to do in the video, and actually screw it. Once you get it set to where you like the gap, then you can screw um, two sets down into the bobbins inside there so that they hold the bobbins in the correct spot. Hold it against one edge. So there you go. Stan Meyer's uh, VIC modular singular design. These are only have, uh, this will be the primary and secondary. And then this one will have the two chokes on it. So you can tune the whole system individually and still have, uh, still have what we're looking for. Little out of time, boys and girls. Stuff just takes time. And let's go. Here comes the whole entire video. Enjoy. You want details? You got details. Peace. All right, well, here is uh, everything that I have sitting in front of me right now. This is the new um, design. Um, gentleman by the name of Ronnie is actually one of the persons that I've been uh, in contact with. And this is partly his idea and his design. I just kind of modified what he was thinking, but it pretty much is his idea as far as how this housing and everything fits together. Um, as far as the ingenuity of the individual pieces and how it fits exactly, I kind of did on my own, but the idea behind what he was doing is this right here. So these are the, the new cores. Um, I will give you part numbers for these. These were ordered from China. You had to buy, uh, I think, uh, uh, maybe, how many were there, 25 of them or something? So, um, yeah, so those are the cores. These are the bobbins. I will be um, showing you in more detail, but there's a hole right there with a slot. And same thing on this, there's also a very fine slot right there next to the uh, bobbin. And I've designed this whole thing to be 3D printable. That's the whole like purpose behind it. Um, okay, so... These are the uh, the upper housings, 
and these are the lower housings. There are numbers printed on there, but they are pretty hard to see, but there's markings. I've got my holes for um, both my uh, mounting and where my wire goes through. So really quickly, I'm going to show you how these bobbins fit together. Basically design these in two parts. This has a little lip on the edge right here. You can see it. And there's a little recessed ledge in here. These just fit together like that. Alright, so I've taken my uh, my tap here and I've run it in all of the proper places. These are a quarter by 20 and 8 by 32. I will show you once I'm all done the particular holes that I've got and what size they are. Alright, so I went ahead and uh, put this one together so you can see what it looks like. It does not come out. Now the, uh, the, the, the fasteners I'm using are nylon and they have a uh, uh, focus on me. This camera used to focus really well, now it doesn't. I have a, uh, a hex head in the back. I should have got something different. These do not work very well. Um, the Allen wrenches seem to fit loosely and they want to slip. So what I've done is I've gotten me a, uh, a hex or a, uh, a star bit. Let's see if I can get a close one. Looks like this. Doesn't need the hole in it, but a star bit. And compressing the star bit in the hole is allowing me to tighten it down. Um, so that's what I've been doing. So these are, uh, I believe, 1032? No, 832 by half inch long. Um, the nylon. And I'm using everything nylon because we do not want any interference with any other objects around it. So I'll go ahead and put this one together and I'll go ahead and put these two together. Um, so these two holes right here are the uh, 832. Same thing on both sides. These are the 832 here. The um, holes in here are quarter 20, uh, quarter 20 here. And then um, that's it. That's all the holes I've got. The other connectors that go in uh, these holes, I did not thread these. I just run them in there. Got the correct hole diameter. All right. So one thing to take note of is if you print these out, these are not fun. These nylon, uh, these little nylon things don't work very well with the hex head. They may have worked better with the uh, Phillips or the, excuse me, the flathead, <clears throat> but honestly shoving a uh, oversized uh, star bit in there, that functioned really well. So these are all done, the cores are together, everything fits nicely. So now we can, uh, I'm going to go ahead and glue the core or the uh, bobbins together, I'll just do one so you can see how, how I do it. So it's pretty straightforward. Again, I have that notch cut in there. And uh, I use uh, super glue. I use the Loctite brand uh, gel control. It seems to work well. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the inside of here. Or maybe a little more than I want. And then uh, this goes quick, so if you don't get it together the first time, you'll be in trouble. Make sure it looks square. Now roll it, make sure it looks good. 
and uh, let it dry. You can add a little more if you need it when it's done, but I put quite a bit on there. And that's how you do that. So we'll do them all like that. Alrighty, got all the bobbins done. I made a couple extra, I really only need four. So those are all done. Um, next we're going to work on the uh, adjustments here. Show you what I got to do that with. Alrighty. So I've got some uh, black nylon all thread here. Some uh, little uh, thumb screw. Nylon thumb screws. focus nylon thumb screws some regular black nylon nuts the color doesn't matter and some nylon washers so the idea here is to make this adjustable so I wanted to have a a hand screw that I could use thumb screw so that's what these are for and uh, yeah so the all thread is going to go down inside of here I should probably just thread this all the way in there and get me a measurement. So let's do that. Alrighty, so rough estimate is going to be inch and three quarters. And I'm going to cut this at an inch and three quarters. go. <clears throat> Alright, so I went ahead and took the nylon nuts and stuck them on the lathe and um, basically just cut them down so that they're round on the outside. You could took a knife, which I tried, and just cut the edge off, which works fine. But since I have a lathe, they're going to go ahead and use it. Otherwise, you could take a razor blade and I just cut the corners off. That worked okay, too. So, um, I'll clean these up just a tiny bit more on the edges, and I'll show you how to assemble this. Alrighty, so I've currently uh, going to assemble the top portion of this and I've got a piece of magnet wire here. This is 18 AWG magnet wire. So I'm going to use to hold the the um, bolts and nuts in place. So what I did is I threaded these down, backed them off just a hair so they're still a little bit loose and I tightened these down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right through all of this and insert the piece of magnet wire to hold the nut in place. Basically I'm locking it in here. Let's do a quick uh, size fit and see if that's good. <coughs> it's, almost, it's almost a fraction loose. <coughs> I'd rather have it a little bit tighter. This 18 AWG heavy build, I'm going to be using a point Four point oh four three drill bit. Let me get that to fit a little better. All right, occasionally uh, drill bits I use are too small for the chuck, so I just take a piece of tape and wrap it on there, and that gives me enough to keep it uh, keep it in the chuck. doesn't always sit flat, sometimes you have to figure that one out. Okay. I got them drilled. I was using a number 57 drill bit, which is a .043. But really, uh, if you're going to use a piece of magnet wire, any, any piece of magnet wire should probably work. So, the idea here 
is to insert the magnet wire into the point where it's not sticking out the other side yet but close and then cut it I'm going to push this flush And then the uh, same thing on the other side. What this is doing is it's creating a way for this. Basically, I don't want this to turn. These pair of cuts can cut it flush, so I'll just do that. Now, Basically what I've done is this cannot turn any longer on this threaded stud. So we're going to add the washers. Okay, that gives it a slip designed to, uh, to be able to fit in there nicely. There it goes. Now originally I put these holes here so I could put the wire in after I assembled it, but I'm not going to do that. Found out I can do it easier. We'll assemble it this way. Okay, washer on top. Okay, so you want to tighten these just to where they're barely snug. We're going to drill these and do the same thing. And at the end, what we want is we want a, a system that is able to be turned by hand but does not, uh, does not allow the screw to turn. So what it does is, in, in theory, it actually raises and lowers the top half of this. Because right now, this cannot come apart. So I'll drill those and show you what it looks like. Alrighty, so after I uh, drilled this and took it off, I found out that when I had these threaded all the way tight, they were actually had some dead space in here. So they were really loose. So I pulled the pins back out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna tighten this till it's tight, till it's snug. Make sure I can still move it, but snug. I redrill my holes. Okay, that one is done. So as you can see, this is uh, is tight. It's not loose. But you can still turn it. I'll trim the tops off these. Not really any play in there, and that's what you want, because this is actually going to be setting the gap in here. Alrighty, everybody. So, a while back, when I was building the... Uh, the VIC style bobbin like this, I found these connectors for it, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and use them. Um, and they go in this hole right here. So there will be four of them, one for each of the coils, or two for each of the coils I should say. Then the other holes here and here are for where the wire feeds through and they get wrapped around to the uh, to the actual part where the connections are made so the unit is solid so that's how that's how that fits together so let's put it together alright grab my nut driver quarter inch and they fit right on there so I uh, screwed them in there now the idea is is that these top two are for this coil and these bottom two are for this other coil and there are holes in there, like I said, where the wires come out and actually go right to this terminal. They get uh, soldered on there, and then you've got your place to uh, attach your other wire. Sweet. Got both of them done. 
Okay, well, I have completed the build here. Um, so this is what these parts look like while the when they're finished. Core stay in there by these pieces. The pins hold all these things in place. These are pretty tight, but you can move them. They need to be really tight. Bottoms look like this. And the, uh, the bobbins. So, the super glue is taking quite some time to dry, but it's looking good. So basically this is the adjustable gap VIC. Now some of you are going to ask me, aren't these all supposed to be on the same core? And I'm going to tell you not necessarily. Um, from my understanding you can do it both ways. So we're going to try it this way first. I believe I can get these exact same cores but much 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 bigger. And then we'll try the dual. It'll be easier to tune this if they're on separate um, cores and coils. Gives it would help if I put the right pieces together, wouldn't it? So, the wire will come in on this little bitty tiny spot. It's such a tiny hole. There is a hole right there. And then the other is going to come out right on the edge. So the wire actually comes out fitted right up against there and these are all curved inside surfaces. So maybe I can show you what it looks like on the drawing so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Okay, that's the end of this session. Let's look at the drawings. But uh, here's the cores. As you can see they're hard to read on the actual print but these are lines are numbered so you know how far down the left side is versus the right side um, the bobbin itself is right here the top um, holes are different they sit out a little bit further and there is no exit but I do have an exit and an inlet on the bottom and so you can actually see that all the surfaces are curved in here this is what it actually looks like it's got this nice curved arc here so you can come in and come down and it's got a nice nice arced bottom to it so oops Move back where you were, there you go. So anyway, um, that's all I really got for you. My computer is so slow with the, t with the uh, capture on, but there you can see the channel. Channel in the bottom there. And it looks like this particular one it's actually this one over here. This is the one with the exit hole. So there you go. Um, so far this is the, the design, the new VIC design. And um, thanks to uh, Ronnie for actually uh, brainstorming this idea originally and I kind of ran with his thought. He was already halfway through building his and I decided I could 3D print it faster than he could machine it. <laughs> so I just engineered it real quick and uh, and that's what I come up with. Okay, um, that's it. And that's how it's done. So uh, that's all I got for you. Stan Meyer's uh, VIC, simple, uh, simple design, all 3D printable. I will post all the information on the forums and my website, so you'll have everything you need to go replicate this. 
Um, I'll give you the part numbers where I got them, so forth and so on. So peace and love to you all. That's all from Russ with RWG Research and quantumgravityresearch.org. So, peace out. Have a good day. Bye.